Everybody, John back with another Well of Magic video, doing another Dominaria draft. Uh, the last one went so well. Uh, why not? Uh, why not run it back? Uh, went three zero last time with blue red wizards. Format is super sweet. Although I'm pretty sure that deck was uh, definitely didn't feel like a three zero deck while we were drafting it, but definitely ended up as one. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited. This format's super sweet. Let's see what we uh see what we can't do here. I'm also really excited for the pro tour in a few weeks to see what the pros think as well. We've had a few limited GPs, of course. Um one was team sealed, the other was regular limited. Um And then reading around, it seems like the uh two consensus best decks appear to be green black sapperlings and blue red wizards. Uh, definitely agree that Green Black Sapperlings is a really, really good archetype if you can get the pieces together. Uh, but I've had fun with the uh, the Kicker decks. So I've had fun with the Wizard deck. So let's see if our uh, pack one pick one here in a little bit gives us any sort of additional incentive. All right, and Magical Line, please. Ooh. Oh no, no. Make me make this choice. Well, A, this pack is filled with just, it's just flush with red cards, uh, as well as some pretty good blue cards. Time of Ice is very powerful. Uh, there's also Gift of Growth, Pegasus Corsair, and Blessed Light. But there's also this Joyra here. Would I rather do, like, shenanigans with Joyra, or would I rather just take probably the best card in the pack and fight with fire? Man, this is close. Well, maybe it's not that close. I think... Yeah, I think this is fight with fire here. Like I want to take Joyra, but no, let's uh let's be good discipline drafters and take take fight with fire. All right, so we got past a two headed giant, which is a pretty decent rare. It's uh it's definitely something that can end the games very quickly, whether it comes up with menace or double strike. Uh, there's also uh the real Slinvoda, although fight with fire and Slinvoda don't exactly go in the same deck. Uh, Song of Freilis is a absurd uncommon. This card is bonkers good. And I think I'm gonna it's going to be my pick. Uh, the person to our right either took a foil or they took a common. And I don't know if I would take Song of Freilis over something like an Eviscerate, uh, which could be a reasonable card that would be in this pack as well. I'd love to get a Sapperling Migration as well, because the Red Green Kicker deck really loves to have Migration. I think Migration is just one of the key Excuse me, key green commons, but we'll take the song, get past, uh, grow from the ashes, a perfect kicker card. Uh, there's also a Urza's Tome in this pack, alongside uh, Secret Animus, Gitu, Journey Mage. Eventually, eventually we're gonna want, uh, we're gonna want creatures, but I think I don't mind taking a grow from the ashes here and just kind of waiting to see what we are in because. Fight with Fire was our pack one pick one, but we've been past two pretty good green cards. Um, so I think green is definitely a color that we should consider uh, as, consider strongly as one of our colors. Um, granted, that may dry up in future picks, but you know we've got time to see. We're only three picks in. We could we could go in very few, very many directions. All right, so this is the second Gaia's Blessing we've seen. That's not a, not exactly a good sign. There's also an Avon Sentry, a Dark Bargain, a Divest, a Lava Runner, a Windgrace Acolyte, and a Short Sword. I feel like if I'm trying to stay open, I don't need to take a green card. Both these green cards are mediocre. A Memorial to Glory is very good with cards like Song of Freilis. So Memorial to Glory could be something that we could do. Uh, if Green Black I think is the best archetype, I can see taking Dark Bargain, but I think I'm fine taking this Memorial to Glory. We've seen some pretty solid white cards. Well, I guess the question is, would I rather have Memorial or Avon Sentry? I think Memorial works better with Song of Freilis, and I'm and I'm more likely to want to play this than I am Avon Sentry. So we'll take Memorial to Glory, see what we get here. Not a whole lot here. There is Adventurous Impulse, as well as Cal Caligo Skin Witch. Um, in black. There's Cabal Stronghold, but I don't think that card's really great in limited. There's also just a Jousting Lance. 
I think I want to take this adventurous impulse. I don't want the people to my left thinking that green is open. And we've been taking pretty much all the good green cards that we've seen outside of uh, pack one, pick one when we took Fight with Fire and Song of Fre or when we took Song of Freilis over Sapperling Migration. All right, here we got... Ooh, that's a late Shiv and Fire. Okay, so I think we are, in fact, in red. Uh, we do need creatures, but I'm going to take the Shiv and Fire. A sixth pick Shiv and Fire is a definite signal that uh, we should be taking red cards again. And again, I really want to try and play uh, the Song of Freilis. And also, Girl from the Ashes plus Song does give us some options to splash. Uh, whether we want to splash another color or splash red for these cards. Uh, this pack is pretty mediocre. I think I'm going to take this Kelden Raider over Memorial to Unity. I've been really unimpressed with this Memorial. Sure, it finds a creature, but it, you don't get it into the late game. And I would rather my land do something a little bit more impactful than just find a creature. Especially if I'm going to find a green creature. And the green creatures tend to be pretty expensive. Which is why I like Memorial to Glory a little bit better. There's a little bit more impact on the board. Uh, it can be especially powerful when you're going wide with things like the aforementioned Song of Freilis here. Alright, what do we have here? We have another Adventurous Impulse, which is not huge. This pack's pretty, pretty average. Uh, based on what we have so far, I think I'm fine taking this Partic Wanderer, actually. It's not exciting, but we don't have enough creatures for Frenzied Rage to be good. Like, we only have one creature, now we have two. Oh, wow. All right, so red is open. We'll take this Bloodstone Goblin very happily uh, over some of these other cards. At worst, Bloodstone Goblin is a 2-2 two, two for two. So that's going to put that's gonna make me feel a lot better about uh, where our direction is going in the future. All right, well, none of the good kicker cards wield, kind of as I would have expected. Uh, I could take the real Slinvoda, but I think I'm going to take this Fervent Strike. Primordial Worm is fine, but I don't... It's becoming less and less likely that we are green. All right, Goblin War Chief, that's a fine little pickup for a red deck. Because we we took some... All right, so none of these cards are really playable. Uh, I'll just put this Divest in the board. And while our green cards are very strong, our green cards have a very, very high upside. Uh, would I rather have a 5 and a 5 4? Not really, but I think it's better than Skirk Prospector and Limited. Uh, Dredge Sentinel's bad. All we are is that we have a few very strong reasons to be red. We have Fight with Fire and Shiv and Fire in red. And then we've got two really powerful green cards. I think our red is definitely our main color. Also, I think if we had taken the Joyra, we could have been heavily punished, but I wasn't paying too much attention to what our picks were there. All right, well, here's a settle the score, uh, which could push us more into the um, red-black direction. Um, there's also a Torgar, but Torgar doesn't work well with what we've got, plus we don't really have any creatures anyways. Um, there's also Flame of Keld, and I've drafted them on a red deck before, but this is not a good example of the mono red deck I feel like I think I just want to take the settle the score as as a hedge towards black because oh boom big red card now I kind of feel silly for passing the flame of Keld but flame of Keld could wheel uh, other cards in this pack that are pretty good there's knight of grace there's a separately migration if we want to stay stay green but we're already wanted to be heavy red for Fight with Fire, Kelden Raider. We're going to take the Chain Whirler. Because if we can play Chain Whirler, then everything just gets ridiculous. Uh, here, I don't see a ton of really powerful cards. I guess there's Voltaic Servant as a two-drop. Uh, there's also just a Rampaging Cyclops, which is a decent body, but not exciting. Uh, there's Tiana, but we don't have anything that kind of goes with Tiana at all. Uh, there's Soul Salvage if we want to end up in black. There's Thran Temple Gateway if we want to be like our uh, our round three opponent. There's also Seismic Shift, but I'd rather just take a creature now. Like, I'm sure we've been taking creatures pretty consistently, but I think we'll take the Cyclops here. All right, so we got Howling Golem. Um, the, so the green and black cards in this pack are really bad. 
We've got Feral Abomination, Llanowar Envoy. There's Warlord's Fury, which is not exciting. The best card in this pack is probably just Blessed Light. Or uh, Dominant Trapper. We don't have a lot of things that trigger the Trapper right now, and I think it may be a little too late to try to go that route. There's also Pegasus Courser, which is just solid. Uh, so our removal is Shivan Fire, Fight with Fire. And then we could either play Black for Settle the Score. Let's take Blessed Light, I guess. Well... Would rather have a Howling Golem or a Blessed Light? I think I'd rather have a Howling Golem. Alright, so here are some huge kind of blue signals. we got Tetsuko, Blink of an Eye, Relic Runner. Also Sage of Latnam. This would have been a, uh, a very spicy place to be uh, earlier. However, it's a little, <laughs> a little late in the game, I think, to be taking some of these cards. I'm just going to take this Jousting Lance. Uh, try to keep us open maybe a little bit longer because, again, we're not seeing, like, a lot of the real, like, heavy hitters, per se. I would, I would like some two drops, though. That much is true. Oh, well, there's another blink of an eye. There's also a Knight of Nubanalia. Makes me kind of wish I had taken the, um, the Blessing, or the Blessed Light. There's another Jousting Lance as well. Also a Cabal Paladin, but none of these cards seem that exciting, though. I guess the question is like, what are we, what are we trying to do? What are we trying to play? And I'm not sure what we are yet. Would I rather have a second Jousting Lance or a second Fervent Strike? And this draft has just gone way off the rails. Uh, I'll just take second Jousting Lance. All right, here is oh wow, a lot a lot of good cards in this pack. There's a Wild Onslaught. Which I think is underrated um, by many. I would have loved to be able to pick this up with a uh, with the sapling migration or the sapling migration. Would I rather have this over any of these other cards? Probably not. Like there's a Cabal of Angel, which is a two drop. Uh, it does work well if we wanted to play settle the score, though. I think I'm fine with that. Because like again, we have really good green cards, but our settle the score is also just absurd. Although playing subtle in the same deck as Chain Whirler is a little awkward. Let's just take Wild Onslaught. Alright, what do we have? We have Zolfrin Void. I don't think we can play a Zolfrin Void in a Chain Whirler deck. There's a Blood Tallow Candle, which I think is fine. Yeah, I think we take the Candle here. Alright, Flame of Keld Wield. As in Wizard Retour, but that usually wields. Alright, so let's take the Flame of Keld. Uh, none of these cards are really good. I guess I could take Guardians of Koilos, I suppose. Again, we don't really have any sort of... Alright, I'll take Seismic Shift here. We still don't have a lot of kind of direction for our second color. All we know is that we're base red. Because it's been wide open. I say wide open. You know, we pack one, pick one, a fight with fire. Then we got past a, like, sixth, seventh pick, shiv and fire. We got to open and take a settle the score. Again, our green cards are solid. We do need more creatures. And if we can find a, uh... Find some more sapling migrations, although I really don't think that we're going to... Still a lot of time left to see how this uh, this draft goes. All right, we'll take a fervent strike. All right, pack three really needs to deliver for us. We've only got nine creatures which includes three artifact creatures. Oh, boy. Well, then. Oh, lordy. Okay. So there's an Adelise, but we have no wizards, so I don't think we can take Adelise. There's an On Sarah's Wings, which is bonkers good. There's another Flame of Kel, but we wield the last one, so I have high hopes that we could wield this one if necessary. 
There's also a skittering surveyor, which uh, me and my friends have gotten higher and higher on, is how good it is. There's also another Keldon Raider. There's also a Death Bloom Thalid, which is just a really solid three drop. I think I take the Skittering Surveyor, honestly. I mean, this deck's going to want two, so I could also see it being Servant, I guess. But Surveyor's is very, very powerful, and it could let us like play one of these off-color, these non-red cards, basically. Alright, so here we're going to take this uh, Bloodstone Goblin, because I think we're going to try to go all in on the Flame of Keld, especially since we just opened one. And also, like... I could I could see an argument for taking Grow from the Ashes here, but we're not very green at all. So I think we're not green. I think that we are going to be essentially mono red. Another flame of Keld. Oh my god. Oh man. With Banalish Marshals, I don't think we can take Banalish Marshals. Sadly, even though Banal mainly because we also have Chain Whirler in this pack. Lordy, lordy, lordy. Um, yeah, sure, Flame of Keld. Here we go. <laughs> so I think we're playing Settle the Score as a really awkward splash card. I'd rather it be Eviscerate. But now we get the stupid green cards that... Oh my god. Um, Rampaging Cyclops, I guess? Over Easter Glider? Sure. Hopefully these Flame of Kells will propel us to victory, I, I hope. Uh, jeez. Yeah, this this has, uh, this has gone off the rails really quickly. Um, uh, hmm. I mean, if I'm playing Settle the Score, listen, let's, uh, let's just not, let's just not hold anything back. Ooh, Keldon Warcaller, that's actually great. Keld of Warcaller, whenever it attacks, you add a lore counter. So I can play Flame of Keld, right? Let's say I play Keld of Warcaller on two. Uh, then I get to attack and up the counter, up the trigger on Flame of Keld, or uh, I play Keld of Warcaller after I draw cards off of Flame of Keld, and then play another Flame of Keld or whatever, so I could actually get both of them to go off in the same turn ish. Yeah, that would be. That would be very, very spicy. See if we get the third flame back. Oh, there we go. Another Bloodstone Goblin. I think this thing just wants twos. We don't have a lot of wizards. Otherwise, I think it, the pick would be G2 Journey Mage. But yeah, Bloodstone Goblin. Uh, yeah, Gideon. Don't have any kicker cards anymore. Oh no, we have Shiv and Fire and Fight with Fire. Those are our kicker cards. Okay. Uh, we're going to cut Candle because we can. Um... So with these black cards, I think we have to play like four, five swamps. Ooh, so Champion of Flame gets pretty absurd with Jousting Lance. Would I rather have a Champion of Flame or a Runamuck? I think I'd rather have a Runamuck. Champion is a creature, though. Hmm. That's tricky. So the next pack would have the Flame of Keld. Oh, man. Um, hmm. I only have two things that for Champion of Flame. Let's just take the Runamuck. It's a little bit more safe. There we go. Flame of Keld. Here we go. I didn't know. Everyone, all of you saw this draft did not start off trying to be mono red. But here we are. I'm going to take this Lich's Mastery for Constructed because reasons. Um, actually, let's cut... Let's cut the black entirely. Play the seismic shift. Uh, power stone shard to the sideboard. Rat colony, go away. Warlord's fury. We might play that. <laughs> All right. So the question is, how many mountains can we play? And by how many, I mean how few can we play? So I think one of these seismic shifts kind of has to go. Sad, but true. Is, and another question, is triple flame of Keld too many flames? 
Because I don't think I can play 15 lands. It's possible. Like, cut a seismic shift. Don't know if we can cut a creature. I can see cutting a jousting lance. And then just add 16 mountains to the deck. We do have Skittering Surveyor and Howling Golem, which can kind of draw us cards. Sure, here we go. Let's go. The Flame of Keld is ignited. Let's bussing go. Alrighty, here we are for round number one up against Stasis. Uh, we won the die roll, so of course we're going first. Oh, come on. Not like this. <laughs> Cantrip Warlord's Fury? No, we're going to mulligan this. Yeah, this is fine. Oh, they also mulligan to six? Five, 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 five. Aw. Uh, fourth Mountain. Go away. I do not want to see the Fourth Mountain yet. <laughs> I'd rather draw action. All right, what do we got? See? See, we're going to draw the other stupid mountain anyway, so... All righty. Let's... Oh, no, deck. This is not what I wanted. By the way, our opponent went swamp, swamp. But, uh, swamp, swamp, swamp. Excuse me. They got nothing? Well, maybe I would have wanted that other mountain, because we just drew Pardic Wanderer. We're going to get in for two. See if our opponent has a trick. They do not. We'll play our four mana, four, four. An opponent has seen enough. I am assuming that they did not see their second color, which is always awkward, but we were also attacking for six. Uh, so they are playing black cards. Does that make me want to play anything differently? I don't think so. Run it back! Our opponent has chosen to go first. We are in the draw, and man... How greedy do I want to be? I've got double Flame of Keld. But... No, i got to mulligan this. I'm going to keep this only because it casts the one card in our hand. That's This is probably a mistake, but I really don't care. Okay, so they are, they're green-black. And they were, in fact, missing their, uh, their, their second color. In this case, they're playing green for Llanowar Elves. Uh, what is this? Slimefoot? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. SpaghettiOs. This is actually going to be a great time to be able to go Fervent Strike in combat and then post-combat Flame of Keld. What is this? Right of Bells and Lock. Well, that's... That's not ideal. That is... That is the opposite of what we want. Our opponent is going to attack with... The slimy boy. We will not block, sadly. Alright, what do we draw? Mountain. Mountain was not what I wanted to draw. So what we're going to do is we're going to attack with our goblin. Because we only know fighting. We're not going to surprise anybody with this. I think I think our opponent has... Wow, they didn't block. Whatever. Here, Flame of Keld. I hope... You are prepared for everything, although we're probably dead. Let's see what our opponent has. So they make clerics. They're going to attack with their creatures with power. We will take the damage. So next turn, they're going to make a demon. All right, so we draw another Flame of Keld. Beautiful. Jousting Lance into play. Uh, let's go ahead and attack with our goblin because what else are we going to do with it? Now there is a series of draws that we can have off of our second Flame of Keld um, that maybe not win us the game, but get us pretty close to it. All right. Opponent's going to make a sapperling in response to our Flame of Keld, but that's fine. 
So there's the demon, sure. I was unaware that Finn Balor um, was in, was playing Magic now, but you know, everyone's got hobbies. What is your follow-up opponent? Six mana, Sapling Migration kicked, sure. Alrighty, so we will... All our red sources deal plus two damage this turn. And we draw nothing but mountains. Okay, we're very, very dead now. <laughs> we are very, 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 very dead. So we had a mediocre start to our first game. And then we had just a bonker. And then our opponent just had probably their best possible start their second game. So we're going to be on the play. And none of my removal hits a 6-6. So I could see playing Blood Tallow Candle. And man, we just got so flooded. Uh, 15 lands might actually be right. Especially with the amount of draw we have. Oh no, I don't want to add basic. Excuse me. Let's go. Oh man, we can Guardians of Coilos back our uh, Flame of Kelds. That could be that could be really spicy. I would like to play first. Yes. Uh, this hand is great. It needs one mountain, which is easily doable. And say go to our opponent. Also, we have probably the best answer to their deck in Goblin Chain Whirler. Which makes me kind of wish slash hope that all right they have a land or elves whatever you you did it you did it friend here's bloodstone goblin it's now your turn so if they go swamp slimefoot I am snap attacking oh sapperd ah eh, sure I think this is equally fine so we're gonna go mountain oh man. How greedy do I get? How greedy. So I can either Chain Whirler now, force them to only have, you know, three mana next turn at most. I guess it does depend on how heavily they're leaning on this land or elves. So I can also play Howling Golem, which blocks Sap Herd. And, like, this Flame of Keld is not in the discussion right now. Sure, it's going to be very, very powerful later, but it's not good right now. So the lines I'm thinking about are playing Warchief, maybe attacking with both. If I attack with both, Sapper probably trades for Warchief, which I'm probably okay with. And then they take two off of Bloodstone Goblin and go to 18. Or I attack with Bloodstone Goblin, they trade with Sapper, then I go Chain Whirler, wipe their board. Would I rather them... I guess the question is, would I rather save Chain Whirler in case their turn for their next turn is make dudes or play Rite of Bells and Lock? Or... Hmm. I think I'm going to play a little bit conservatively and play Howling Golem. That way, if their line is going to involve them going, you know, swap Rite of Bells and Lock, then I can use Chain Whirler... See? Perfect. Exactly what I wanted to see. Exactly. This is exactly what I wanted to happen. All right. We draw a Bloodstone Goblin. Okay. So, we're going to attack with... Hmm. So, I think what we're going to do is we're going to attack with Howling Golem. Just it. If he wants to trade, he's more than welcome to. Another Flame of Kelt. Oh, boy. Sadly, Flame of Kel's worse in multiples. Um, I think we just play this Bloodstone Goblin and say go. Alright, so now you make some more dudes. Just play a Sapperly Migration. Alright, land. So this is five mana they have access to. Song of Freilis. Oh. Oh, friend. You are certainly doing it. Kick, please kick a sapling migration. Please let this be what you're doing. Kick a sapling migration. Please. Please. Oh, <laughs> oh opponent. Opponent. You messed up. You messed up. You messed up. 
Alrighty. Seismic Shift. That card is not good right now. So, we are going to attack with everything. With the hope that our opponent decides that they want to trade a goblin for a sapherd. Because little does our opponent know that lurking in our hand is their worst possible fear. Also, they only have access to one mana. There's not really anything that they could have right now that is even remotely relevant. Like, they could have Ride of Bells and, or uh, Blessing of Bells and Lock, but that's like the only possible thing that they could have. Oh, yes. Opponent? Opponent, I would like to introduce you to your demise. Shatterpaws? Ah, our opponent has, uh, <laughs> our opponent says, oh, good lord, lol. Well, that is exactly the reaction that I wanted. That is precisely what I wanted to do. <laughs> so this Chain Whirler is approximately a, see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten for one? To 10 for 1. We'll just call it a 10 for 1. So now our opponent's creatures all get the ability to get to make mana. You did it. And you make a 6-6 six, six demon. That says at the beginning of your turn, uh, sack a creature, or if you can't sack a creature, it takes 6 damage. It's also another creature, which is highly relevant. So our opponent is making some manas. Three mana. Four. Nope. Two mana. Nope. 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 They're they're th they're rethinking everything. Our opponent is going to be in a huge bind. I mean, also next turn, they get to make it a 7-7 seven, seven indestructible trample vigilant for a turn, but whatever. They were expecting to empty their hand. They were expecting to be like, all right, we've done it. We have, I have all this board presence. Next turn, I'm going to kill you with Song of Frey Elise. But don't know. The Goblin Chain Whirler had other plans for you. Opponent goes to combat, but unfortunately they... Don't have anything they can attack with. And they're just done. Oh boy. Well then. So I guess the next question is how how big do we want to go? I think this is what we do. We kill your forest. Your demon can't block. Hit you for seven. And then you die on your upkeep. The one thing that they could have is that they could have the Sapperling trick, the four mana, you know, make three dudes, but I think I'm still fine with that. If their line was make three dudes, yeah, no. We had the match. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> Whoo, baby. That was fun. All right, round number two. Alrighty, round number two against Grev Jim. Uh, uh, I will keep this seven. This seven's pretty good. We're on the draw, which is stinky, but, you know. We do what we must because we can. Tur our plan is going to be to Mountain. Mountain was not part of the plan. Our plan is going to play this play a turn two war caller. See what our opponent's up to. Uh, opponent is on the same plan as our last opponent in going Swamp Swamp. Oh, man. So one thing that I have found issue with with this deck, with having triple Flame of Keld, is that the Flames of Keld don't necessarily do a whole lot in multiples. All right, well, we're going to attack with our Kelden Warcaller because we can use Run Amok to, uh, to eat this Skin Witch, which I am 
100% going to do. Sure, it doesn't deal a whole ton of damage, but, you know, 2-2s two and 1-3s don't exactly get along very well. An opponent has no other land drop, so that's, that is bad for them. All right, we drew a mountain. So we're going to play said mountain. Then we're going to play Flame of Keld. <laughs> we will discard our hand, which is sadly another Flame of Keld. But wait, there's more. Keld and Warcaller attacks. Puts a counter on <laughs> Flame of Keld to draw some cards, which sadly isn't a whole lot. But next turn, we get to pop Flame of Keld and deal like four damage to our opponent. And even they have an X4, which is very possible. We'll just be able to attack through it. Yeah, I think, yeah, drawing the second Flame of Keld there is probably, oh, they have invoked the Divine? Wow. Alrighty, fine. Fine. You are, you were correct in playing a card that uh, you probably should have been playing anyways. So, good on you. Uh, we're going to play the Surveyor to get a land out of our deck. Uh, we will play said land. And I think I want to save this Warlord's Fury for later. So we're going to go ahead and just attack for two, which is fine. Just undid all the damage we had dealt to them. All right, what do you got next, opponent? Danatha. Why are you playing good cards, opponent? Opponent, please. All right, what do we draw? We draw Bloodstone Goblin. Uh, let's let's kick this off with the Warlord's Fury. Get some first strike up in here. Mountains. I didn't want to draw mountains. We'll play Bloodstone Goblin. And then, uh, I'll offer the trade. I will allow you the opportunity to trade. All right, they trade. Perfect. Because I don't want Danatha around any more. Now can we please draw another Flame of Keld? <laughs> Probably actually should have played one of these mountains. That way, if we draw Pardic Wanderer, we can cast it. Sergeant at Arms. Why, opponents? Why all these two threes? Why you gotta be hating? Alright, well, we have officially flooded. <laughs> officially. We have no attacks, because we just get eaten by this Sergeant at Arms. And we discarded three mountains to Flame of Keld, too. Oh, man. Knight of Grace. All right, well, that's also annoying. Opponent, you're going to stay home? Or are you going to come and knock in? No, they're going to stay home. Well, we drew Keldon Raider, which is probably one of our better draws. Let's just get rid of these useless mountains. They're not as useless as useless islands. Ooh, there we go. That's a good draw. So I think we're just going to say go here. We don't really have any good attacks, sadly. Keldon Raider will definitely uh, make things a little bit more interesting. Uh, since it's a 4-3 and our opponent has a 2-2 first strike. And then if they play a legendary, then this honor guard's going to get big. Ooh, Quinde? Ooh, that's really good. So now this Knight of Grace has double strike. Oh, they don't even attack? Oh. Well, because of... Uh, so Quinde has double strike and gives their your, their first strikers double strike. So this Knight has double strike. So this Bloodstone Goblin gets plus one, plus one in Menace um, if I kick a spell. So I think I'm going to do that on Quinde, which is severe overkill. But only because it triggers the goblin, and now they have a a tougher time blocking it. Because at worst, it trades for one of their creatures. And I'm going to serve with the war, with the Keldon Warcaller as well. Because if they want to kill the Warcaller, they have to double block it, but they have to double block the goblin also if they want to kill it. So they're going to do that double block, and I'm totally okay with that. Uh, I will kill the 2-3 as opposed to the 2-2. Two, two. Pretty easy there. And we'll just say go. Now, can we please draw Flame of Keld number three? Just once. I will also accept Pardic Wanderer. Or even Howling Golem. Our opponent played a Plains. And they're attacking with their 
uh, Banalish Honor Marshal, because it only trades with the Goblin, whereas the Knight of Grace will just eat the Goblin. Ooh, Wind Grace Acolyte. Not what I wanted to see. And they milled three lands, which is also not what I wanted to see. We'll play our Jousting Lance. And we're going to put the Lance on the Skittering Surveyor. And we're going to swing with the Surveyor here. Uh, the Surveyor this way trades with the Knight if they wanted to do that. Oh, they are going to do that. Ooh, that, hmm. That seems like a bold play, opponent. Um, I think to, so that we can use all our mana this turn and we don't have to use our mana next turn, I'll just go ahead and Jousting Lance up the Bloodstone Goblin. Make it much harder for them to block. Opponent has Eldest Reborn. All right, that's bad for us. Our opponent is doing all the things that I normally like doing in Limited, which involves uh, getting value. We just drew a land. Yeah, we are, we are so dead here. We are so dead. Like, sure, the Flame of Keld didn't do a whole lot because of the Invoke the Divine, but we weren't beating Invoke the Divine anyways. So, what do we want to bring in out of the sideboard? Uh, Jousting Lance is a reasonable option. I think I'm going to cut a mountain again. Um, Fervent Strike, maybe? They have a lot of first strikers normally, and I think I like that better than Warlord's Fury. Uh, Seismic Shift could also be a reasonable card. Um, maybe cut one Flame of Keld. Maybe, maybe three Flame of Kelds is too many. Maybe we found the right number. Two Flame of Kelds, perfect number. Three Flame of Kelds, eh. And I think I like this. Yeah, let's run like this. Now, this is my second time drafting a mono red deck in, in Dominaria Limited. I would love to play first. Thank you for asking. Uh, this hand is perfect. We're going to keep it. <laughs> um, and essentially, uh, I only had one Flame of Keld in that deck. Uh, and in that deck, or in that deck, I had Radiating Lightning, which is the four mana uh, deal three to a player and deal one to all of their creatures. And sadly, I never got the chance to do Flame of Keld Chapter Three into that. But um, I was hopeful, hopeful that maybe we could do something else. But I think I think the dream here is going to be Flame of Keld Third Chapter. Ooh, Caligo Skin Witch again? Sure thing, opponent. Uh, this time I'm not going to use my Run Amok here. I'm just going to use the Fervent Strike. Just because it, you know, deals first strike damage. Or just because it only pumps one power, which is why I'm doing it, so. And then second main, Jousting Lance. So next turn we have the option of equipping Jousting Lance or using Run Amok. And if we run amok, uh, we also have the option to then Flame of Kill post-combat. But let's see how our draw step goes and how our opponent's turn goes. Opponent plays a Drudge Sentinel. We'll play this Mountain. And then we're going to attack with our Bloodstone Goblin. I wonder if our opponent wants to offer the trade. Oh, they do. Opponent. You should know better by now. All right, so now we get to deal damage to them, and then we get to play the Flame of Keld, and say go. Discarding a useless mountain. Now, if they have an Evoke the Divine in their hand, I'll be very uh, I'll be very unhappy, but we'll see. Oh, they have a Deathbloom Thalid. All right, so we draw a Goblin Warchief, and two more cards. Fight with Fire, Chain Whirler. Ooh. Ooh. I can do it next turn. All right. So I think I attack with a goblin, offer the trade, post-combat warchief. Yeah, I like that better. But yeah, as of right now, I'm going to be able to use Chain Whirler. Yeah, that's fine. To deal three damage to all of the opponent's creatures. And maybe, just maybe, attack with it as well. But we'll see what the opponent does here. They have five cards in hand. That's a lot of cards in hand. And they just hit five mana. What is this? Sarah Angel. Oh. Oh, honey. Oh, honey. All right, so we draw. Uh, yes, I would like for that to happen. 
So now we're going to play Bloodstone Goblin for one mana because it has haste. And then we're going to play Chain Whirler because it costs one generic less. And then we will attack with the team, putting our opponent... They have to block, I'm pretty sure. Because Chain Whirler is 5 damage. Each of them are other 4. That's, yeah, that's 14 damage. They have to block. <laughs> and everything trades for the Sarah Angel. Yep. That is what I would do. And then they go to 4, and it's their turn. And... Opponent has... Banalish Honor Marshal. I don't think the Honor Marshal does it. So, okay. So, actually, hold on. What could they have? They've shown us Invoke the Divine, which would put them to 8. So, using my mana on Jousting Lance wouldn't exactly do what I want it to do. If they have Invoke the Divine, then if I fight with Fire the Honor Guard, then I attack for five. They would go to three. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. What's better? Well, what else could they have? They could have Gideon's Reproach, which would wipe our board. Yeah, I think I want to play... I definitely want to play around Invoke the Divine. I don't think the best way for me to do that is to just attack with my creatures. Because they're already lethal on their own, and it's not like I'm making one creature more... Well, not... They're individual... They're to, sorry, they're collectively lethal on their own. Alright, so... Opponent goes to one. They Those two creatures trade. I will just go ahead out and play this Bloodstone Goblin and say go. So now I have... Ooh, what do they have? Oh, they have nothing? Okay. We'll say go. There it is. Okay, so they did have Invoke the Divine. Good to know. Good to know. Alright, so they're at five, and we have five power on board. If they play one creature... Shalai. Oh, baby. Yep, that's a power. That's a bomb. Thankfully, however, we have the exact right answer. Fight with Fire deals five, gets over Blessing of Bells and Lock, and our opponent concedes. Perfect. Alrighty. So let's do that again. Can we do that just one more time? Uh, do I want to make any other cuts? I don't think so. I think we're fine. On the draw, is a third is a is the third flame of kill better? I don't think so. Would Warlord's Fury be better? I don't think so either. Yeah, we'll just do this. The reason that we lost was our opponent, or the lost game one is that our opponent was on the ground before we were and had way better things. All right, this hand's fine. It's unexciting, but it's fine. I got two two drops. Uh, I will keep this seven. So we'll see how this goes. All right, our opponent leads on a swamp and says go. Ho, oh, ho, 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 we drew a flame of geld. We're not playing it on turn two, obviously. This is not when we want to play flame of geld on two. Opponent plays Jousting Lance, a card that we really don't have an answer to, aside from just killing their creatures. We draw Goblin War Chief. Well, we'll lead on Kelden Warcaller then. Say go. Now, if we draw a mountain, I think we just slam War Chief attack for uh, whatever we have. Uh oh, uh oh, land. He 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 he. So they could have something like Vicious Offering or Gideon's Reproach, but they, we haven't seen any of those yet. So I think our opponent is going to be on the back foot, to say the least. Opponent found land number three. Turn too late. Plays Death Bloom Thalid. Passes the turn to us. We draw Howling Golem. Well, we'll play our one mana Hasty Bloodstone Goblin and attack with the team. Uh, I think our opponent's going to block the Hasty Goblin. Yep, we'll just Fervent Strike to save it. Uh, sure, they make a 1 1, but they don't have a 3 2, and we get to keep our team. We'll say go again. 
So if they go land Shalai or land any sort of beefy creature, I think we fight with fire. But they, oh, and our opponent is, they, our opponent's seen enough. Our opponent has seen enough. All right, our opponent is here for round number four. Uh, they kept seven. Can we keep this seven? On the draw? I guess so. We have a lot of two drops in the deck. I, I feel pretty, pretty all right that we can draw out of this. Seismic Shift, that's a fine card for later. Great end game card there. All right, our opponent finds a Voldalian Arcanist. Well, that's not good for me. Mainly because it's a 1-3. But we have a Bloodstone Goblin that we drew, so that's nice. I don't think I want to fight with Fire of Voldalian Arcanist, but, you know, we'll see what we have to do. Oh, our opponent just has Adelies then. All right, well, we can't block Adelies. And I think I'm going to be taking some lumps from Adelies anyways. Uh, so let's just play Howling Golem then. Uh, and then we'll say go. There's no point in attacking with our goblin. Also, this may force the uh, Voldalian Arcanist to stay home. It all depends on how many spells they have. Well, they, they, they sent it in with no fear. So if they have two spells, then they eat, then they will, then double blocking doesn't really do anything. But if they have two spells, then I'm then my Howling Golem's dead anyways, and I'm totally fine with my Howling Golem dying here to a couple spells. Didn't exactly want to draw a mountain there, but we'll see what they've got. Oh, they just have Runamuck then. Okay. So yeah, we were definitely going to be losing out there anyways. So that's fine. I am okay with this interaction. I guess okay is not the best way to put it. I'm less than pleased about it, but I don't think I have any other better way of dealing with it. Uh, we're going to play this Rampaging Cyclops and say go. It's a 4-4, four, four. and also it only gets minus 2 minus 0 so as long as two or more creatures are blocking it, so it blocks just as a 4-4, four, four, which is fine. Opponent has three cards in hand. This Relic Runner is not a wizard. It is a rogue, but if they play a historic spell, then suddenly it's going to be unblockable. Opponent's got five mana, three cards, and a lot of options available to it. It's got Fiery Intervention to really put the hurt on us. We can't really block, though. All right, well, we'll start with Keldon Raider, because it's a body. We will discard a mountain to its ability. Draw a Goblin War Chief. Now, we're not, we're not five mana. However, we are, <laughs> we are way behind the eight ball here. So, opponent has Lava Runner, which has haste. And Blink of an Eye kicked on Rel on Keldon Runner, or K Keldon Raider, excuse me. And uh, I think... Yeah, we're just dead. We are just dead. Turn six. We're dead then. Probably should have killed the Adelie sooner then. I think that's the big takeaway there, is I, I tried to get cute with Fire with Fire. Did not get the opportunity to do so. So, with that in mind, Get out of here, Mountain. Get in Fervent Strike. I don't really think there's anything else we can have. Like, yeah, we'll just say go now. Our opponent's deck is insane, though. It's really good. Would I like to play first? Absolutely. Thank you for asking. This hand is miserable. I would like to do better. This hand isn't much better, but I don't think we can go to five. And sadly, I will keep Mountain 3 there, only because our hand has, you know, three or two three drops and a four drop. It guarantees that we're going to be able to hit some of our more expensive creatures. All right, yep, Lava Runner, you've got it. Our turn two is playing a Jousting Lance. Not exactly where we wanted to be anyways. Island into Arcanist again, sure. We will take our one damage. Uh, we're going to play a Skittering Surveyor here so that we can hit our fourth land for Keldon Raider. Um, 
And we'll see what we draw for turn. If we draw a land, we'll just pitch the land to Kelden Raider. See what we come up with next. All right, opponent finds their own Jousting Lance. And... No attacks. Okay. What does no attacks tell us? I'm not sure no attacks tells us anything, though. Hmm. I think we play Mountain. I think we still play Keldon Raider. And I think Goblin Warchief, while cute, is not good enough here, so I'm just going to ditch it. Alright, so we drew Flame of Keld. Oh, our opponent had Wizard's Lightning. Okay, so that's what they had. That's fine. Wizard's Lightning is going to trade with Keldon Raider anyways. Sadly, it's always Lightning Bolt in their deck, so it's not like we could do anything else about it. Opponent suits up their Lava Runner with the Jousting Lance and uh, goes to town. Yep, goes to town. We will not block, sadly. Alrighty, we draw Mountain. So, we have some options here. I could equip the Jousting Lance to Skittering Surveyor and Bash. They're not going to do anything, though. They could also just have Blink of an Eye bounce into my hand, and I've wasted my entire turn. Ooh, Blink of an Eye is a really sick answer to Flame of Kelt that I did not think of. So I probably don't want to jam this Flame of Kelt just into mana where they have Blink of an Eye up, because then they could just blink it back to my hand with the trigger on the stack. No, I think we just play a Howling Golem here. And say go. I don't want to... <laughs> if they blink, if they do that, and they blink of an eye my Flame of Kelt back to my hand, that would be incredibly annoying. It'd be worse if they managed to kick it, too, but... Uh, we will we'll take this damage again. I'm unexcited, but we will we will take that damage. Opponent's follow-up is an Aesir Glider. Alrighty. What do we draw? Draw a mountain. Alright, we'll play the mountain. So now, what I can do here is I can equip Jousting Lance and Fight with Fire, which I think I like. So I'm going to Jousting Lance up the Howling Golem, because I would like to attack and draw a card. All right, I would like to go to combat. All right, so they let us attack with it, which is fine. We draw a Keldon Warcaller. All right, that gives us gives us another option. So they take four, because they don't really have any good blocks anyways. Um, Let's just play Keldon Warcaller, then. This way, we can set up next turn where we get to go fight with fire a dude then Flame of Keld, and then attack and draw the cards immediately off of Flame of Keld. Our opponent found their second mountain. Attacking with everything. Well, we'll block the Lava Runner this time with Skittering Surveyor. We do want to preserve some our life total somewhat. Opponent plays Talarian Scholar. It says Go. What do we draw? We draw Shivan Fire. All right, that's pretty good for us, I'd say. So, how do we want to proceed? I think level zero is Shivan Fire the Lava Runner, Fight with Fire the Scholar, then play Flame of Keld. Because we want to just try to get them as dead as possible. So kill that. And if they have Blink of an Eye and they want to save it, they can totally do so, and I'll have no qualms with that. Alright. Lava Runner's dead. Kill your Talarian Scholar. Do they have a problem with that? They do not. I would like to cast Flame of Keld now. Ah, they were holding up Syncopate. Sure. Alrighty. That's fine. That's whatever. We'll attack with everything, then. <laughs> well, we don't... Well, oh. It's just putting that trigger on the stack for no good reason, then? Okay, that's fine. Uh, I'll hold on to that mountain for now. Syncopate, eh? Okay. 
That's whatever, but sure. It's a it's an instant sorcery that I would play on that deck anyways, but I was playing around Blink of an Eye, which we had seen. We hadn't seen Syncopate yet, and there's no reason to... Oh, what are they Gitu Chronicling back? Wizard's Lightning? Okay, that's... That is a fair card to bring back. Yep, we will take our... We will accept our damage in the air. We draw Rampaging Cyclops. Well, we will attack with Howling Golem. Opponent will take that damage gladly. So four mana for Rampaging Cyclops. Play a Mountain. I'm just going to go ahead and move the Lance over to the Warcaller, making it a 4-2, which is eh, not great, but... It's not like I'm using my mana on anything else. Now, Wizard's Lightning does mean we're at a functional 6, if that's how they want to use it. They could also use it as a removal spell. They do have four cards in hand, in no small part to our Howling Golem, but whatever. Now, if we get to draw Flame of Kel to here, that could be huge. Opponent, yep, equips up the glider. Sure. Kind of anticipated that was coming. Get in for four. Oh, are we just dead now? Okay, we're just dead then. Okay. That's fine, too. Yeah, our opponent's deck was really good anyways. I don't know if we had a chance against them. We had like a small window there, I think. Not a huge window, but a small one. Oh, well. But yeah, that does it for uh, our uh, our take or our run through into uh, into Dominaria Limited again. Um, if you like what you saw, uh, don't hesitate to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at jwiley129. That's jwiley129. And uh, this is a lot of fun. So look forward to to more of more Dominaria in the future. Talk to y'all next time.